Welcome back, everyone, to, to another episode of Chump Chat. Today, we have a s- super special guest, um, MLS All-Star, national team player, Walker Zimmerman. Uh, give a big welcome to him. We'll probably put his Instagram on the screen, so make sure y'all go follow him and show him love. We have a lot of questions uh, here today for him, and uh, we're just ha- happy to have him on. So welcome to the podcast, Walker. Hey, thanks, guys. Appreciate the intro. Yeah, so uh, obviously quarantine's going on. So how you been? Uh, what you been up to? And I've been actually surprisingly pretty busy. I know we can't really go anywhere, but uh, just working out, playing video games, and cooking a lot. That's pretty much it. Oh, yeah. You cook now, huh? Right. Get ready. Uh, tomorrow, I'm doing a, a live cooking show. You guys should tune in. Let's tune in for perfect. sure. So, so do you cook for your wife? For What's that? Do you, cook, do you cook mostly for your wife, or does she cook mostly? You know, she had been cooking throughout her whole marriage uh, I would say the majority of the time, probably 90% of the time. Um, but now that we've been, we got a new house here in Nashville and it's got an awesome kitchen and there's a lot more counter space and a, a little alley kitchen in Santa Monica. It's like, you couldn't even fit two people in there. So now we're uh, able to cook nice equipment. And so I would say since, uh, the new house, since quarantine, I, I would say I'm probably cooking 90% of the dinners. What's the go-to? Uh, What's the go-to dish? Go to, I mean, we we have a couple on the menu. We make turkey burgers a lot. That way we can throw them in salads, pretty low carb um, diet. But you know, when I am preparing for a hard workout, we've done homemade pizzas and making some salmon. That's what I'll be making tomorrow night: some barbecue salmon, some cauliflower rice, and Brussels sprouts. Uh, veggie Thai curry. I posted that on my Instagram uh, like a week ago. So there's a few a few mainstays that we cycle through. That sounds pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. So uh, we might have to tune in for real, though. You definitely uh, need to. But uh, so obviously you've been playing Fortnite. Uh, how, how was that a tournament, and uh, what was the experience like? Because I know there's a bunch of pro-, pro players, and I'm not really into all that. But how was that experience? It was awesome. I mean, it's funny because like I don't really get that nervous for soccer games, but man, I tell you what, that first drop going into the tournament, my hands were sweating. Um, so I teamed up. It was a duos tournament. All pro players or pro athletes from you know a bunch of different sports. I was with Aaron Long and Red Bulls, and uh, you know we we knew that with our talents we probably weren't going to make the finals. So our, our goal was to make the semifinals. And so we were in this qualifying round. Uh, you played about you know as many games as you could fit into in two hours. So we log in, and there's like 30 minutes left on the clock. I'm like, man, this could be our last game, and, and we weren't near qualify we were at you know 57th out of 100 in the top 50 qualify and we're like oh man we got to have a really good game to qualify and we hadn't really been performing and then the last game we just clutched it up we had four limbs and a top five finish so we got 11 points in that game alone and, and eased our way into the finals and then we got bopped and it was not fun that round but getting there was like the highlight for us and yeah, that's big time though yeah. that's big time how long have you been playing have you, how long have you been playing Fortnite for um, I, I started pretty early, but I, I just, I haven't been putting in the hours that I need to, you know, um, until this morning, I've been playing pretty much regularly, uh, which has been a lot of fun. I mean, getting your workouts done and over with, and then have, you know, two hours a game every afternoon and pretty good schedule. That's nice. So you mentioned, uh, you and your wife, uh, now living in Nashville. Uh, how important is family to you, uh, Walker? It's huge. I mean, obviously, just between me and my wife and our relationship is is of the most importance. But, uh, you know, one thing that's really exciting about this move from L.A. to Nashville is being close to family. You know, our, our whole my family and her family are from the East Coast. Uh, my parents are in Atlanta. Uh, my oldest brother and his wife are in Atlanta. Her family is all in Baltimore. And, you know, a lot of extended family in Alabama, North Carolina, South Carolina. So pretty much everyone's within a drive now, which is crazy. Um, coming from you know, Dallas and LA, where it was always a flight, it would always be, you know, difficult to travel to and from. Um, but now it, it opens up you know, possibilities for people to come watch me play and um, get to hang out with them on, on weekends. So that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, switching the topic a little bit. So we talked to Davo Sweeney about two weeks ago, I think, and he talked about how important his faith was to him. Are you uh, a religious man? Uh, is your faith important to you? I am, and, and Dabo, it's funny. So my, my oldest brother actually played for him at Clemson. Um, he was a punter on the football team, and his uh, – let's see, Dabo's first year uh, would have been my brother's was his freshman year. It was like the second half of it, and he took over. And I remember there was this one clip where Dabo kind of like dreamed him coming off the field. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this coach would be pretty intense. And then 
turns out, long story short, I mean, just a, a great guy. He's been tremendous for Clemson's program, and, and being a Clemson fan, I'm pretty excited about you know that football team and the future that they have. But I, I love the way that he presents his faith. How that's kind of like an anchor for him, um, a similar way to anchor in my life. Um, allows me, I, I believe, to have a really good work ethic to overcome uh, tough times and, and to really lean on my faith um, a lot, especially as an athlete. So you've been uh, you've been married now for three or four years, right? Yeah. Um, three years. You you looking to have kids t- anytime soon? I know you're busy, keep transferring teams and, and yeah. getting called to the national team. Uh, but is that a, is that yeah. in the near future for you? No, I think we you know we've always talked about having kids and building a family, and you know I think one of the best things for us has been getting to have that time alone for, for a few years where you don't really have responsibility you have flexibility to travel vacation in the off season um, hang out date nights with no babysitters and, and all that's been, been really fun but yeah I think especially with this move to Nashville it's kind of um, you know transitioning into what seems like you know I, I feel like we're more ready now um, and so certainly that's probably something that'll be on the radar here uh, in the next next little bit so uh, we have typically we have two questions that are kind of like our trademarks here. So one we'll get into later, but one kind of involves your wife. Uh, normally we don't interview we interview people who aren't married yet. But um, yeah. so the question for you is, uh, how did you know your wife was the one, and that I, I guess you knew she wasn't necessarily just after you because of the talent you had and where you were going. Yeah, well I think that's you know honestly one of the most beautiful things about us and our story is you know I, I wasn't a pro yet it's not like i had achieved anything and so our our love was was pretty genuine and i think the coolest part about our relationship was it it didn't start off like strictly romantic right away it was we were literally so gradual and we were friends and then we were best friends and then you know we started dating it was just you know over probably uh i met her in november of our freshman year and we were just really really good friends kind of had some feelings started to develop and um, you know, then by February, you know, four months later, I was like, Hey, like, I like you. I want to pursue you. I want to date you exclusively. Like, let's do this thing. And then, um, I dated the next couple months. Um, and then obviously I left at the end of my uh, sophomore year. And so we'd only really been together for, you know, in person between like the summer break, maybe like six or seven months, but things have just been going so well. Um, but then we have long distance. And I think that's probably when I realized like she was the one because I was like, man, if I can, you know, love this girl and make this relationship work being, you know, thousands of miles apart, uh, only seeing each other every six weeks, for, like two or three days um, and do that for four years. Like that's uh that means there's a lot more than just, you know, the, the physical aspect, um, a lot more than, you know, getting to hang out and have fun dates all the time. It was, you know, worked on our communication and, you know, I would, I would honestly recommend long distance, not for four years, but maybe for, you know, a few months where you can really work on that communication and, um, you know, kind of put all the daily hangouts aside. And, and that was probably a big uh, confirmation for me was, was having success during that time. Yeah. So, I'll go ahead, Ted. I was, I was going to see for both of us, but I've, I've been through a long distance relationship, Walker, and that it's, it's a tough, it's a tough gig. And I know, uh, Johan, he's kind of got a long distance, uh, kind of thing i don't really know uh, much about it he could talk to about it if he wants to but it's definitely difficult uh i do a, i do you got to appreciate the times when you are together though uh, that's a big sure. thing for me uh but yeah long distance didn't work out for me it was i only got to three years walker so i'm not okay hey, that's, for. that's quite a shift so maybe yeah you just need that one more year and, and you would have known but you knew earlier just the other way yeah yeah but i was gonna i was gonna talk about uh kind of the living experiences in like dallas uh la and and now nashville like obviously I watched a show on uh, Netflix. It's called Selling Sunsets, where they uh, they kind of do their real estate in in LA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was just gonna ask, like, which house did you prefer? Like the one in Nashville now, the one in Dallas, or the one in LA? Did you have some like yeah. pimped out house, or how was it? Yeah. So this is our first house that we're actually uh, homeowners in Nashville. So that's really exciting. Um, we rented my my whole career. Um, I was alone in Dallas for the first four years before she moved down. So I had a little uh, apartment there. Uh, and I would say that, you know, I think for me, I lived in Frisco. So the thing about FC Dallas that was awesome was the convenience of, of training and games being at the same facility. Um, that's something I haven't had anywhere else. And 
you know, it, it allowed me to be five minutes from both training and games. And I would say the ease of life, it, it doesn't get much easier than Frisco, Texas. I mean, you can go on Preston Road and you're going to literally have any food that you want, any appliance that you need. Um, everything's just really simple and right there for you. Yeah. I would say Dallas kind of also had a lot of different spots. Um, you know, you can go to McKinney, you can go to downtown, you can go to Allen. Like, there's just a lot of different suburbs that have some cool things to, to experience. Um, but, yeah, in terms of apartment life, I mean, uh, while I was long distance, I did have roommates a couple years, which was a lot of fun. We played more bocce ball, can jam, Polish, uh, like in this green space, our apartment complex, and you can imagine. Um, and the amenities are great. You know, you have the pool and everything. So Frisco, I would define as just easy, um, simple life. Uh, then you go to LA, uh, now I'm married and, you know, we didn't know at the time how long we were going to be in California for, uh, I, was, I only had one year left in my contract when I went to LA. So we're like, all right, I know that the training facility is 45 minutes away from, from Santa Monica, but I want to be by the beach. I want to have the full California experience, um, you know, near Malibu, near the Palisades. So we sacrificed the uh, the commute every day to training and to games uh, to be near the beach. And it was awesome. I mean, sunsets were amazing. Uh, we got into walking a little bit just because, you know, it's just the nature and the atmosphere is beautiful. Um, but again, a lot more hectic. It's a lot more upscale, obviously 50 times more expensive. Um, mm-hmm. But that's what you get for the, for the weather and the views and the beach and all those things. So, uh, again, that was a... And for your money, as far as that goes, I mean, our apartment in Dallas would have been, you know, the same size as the one that we had in L.A. And it was, you know, two and a half times more expensive in L.A. Um, so it was crazy. You know, when you're when you're forking out, you know, a couple thousand more for, you know, twelve hundred square feet. And you're just like, what am I doing um, and when you're renting? It's like, oh, my gosh, I'm not seeing any return on this. And so all that leads into um, when I got traded to Nashville, the first thing that we did the first night was look on Zillow. And I just started laughing because I couldn't believe, you know, when I first got traded, I was like, oh, perfect. Like, let's rent a house in Nashville because I'm tired of like small spaces. Like, we'll rent a house. So we go on and we start looking. I'm like, okay, we're buying a house here, like for sure. Um, and not to say that Nashville is cheap, but it's just, it's not LA. And so we, you know, I, I ended up coming to Nashville and within, Basically, 48, 72 hours, um, we were under contract on a house that, you know, even now, after being here for a little over a month uh, in this place, you know, we, we realized that we hit the jackpot. It's an amazing area. Um, the neighborhoods are really cool. And where it differs from Frisco would be those are actual neighborhoods. You know, you turn into a subdivision. It's pretty cookie cutter um, houses. These are more spread out lots, a lot more land, just kind of old school, like classic, just beautiful type houses. Um, and so we're obviously if you're like viewing that in the house. Yeah. yeah I think actually now that you mention it, I think I watched, uh, I don't know if you remember, I, you got interviewed by someone for like a Heineken zero thing. And I think you gave her like a tour of your apartment. Yep. And yeah. 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 Place, right? yeah, yeah. I remember that. yeah. Yeah. Tiny little hole. Yeah. But, um, so I kind of want to move on to soccer a little bit here. I'm I'm a Mexican American, so you know uh, I'm a big fan of Carlos Vela. So what was it like training with him every day, playing against him every day, and, and training? It's awesome. I mean, you know, everyone everyone knows about his left foot, and what's funny is they don't even know about his left foot in training. It's even better. Um, it's pretty funny because we'll be in between drills, and he'll just take a touch to the top of the 18, and always have like one on one challenges with our goalies, basically with the ball slowly rolling from around you know, 18 to 25 yards. And he could just curl it past some, you know, far post, near post, whatever he wanted to do. Um, so we literally started saying it was like a free throw for him. Anytime it's on his left foot, cutting inside around the 18, it's literally like a free throw. So he's hitting like 80, 90%. Um, it was crazy. So that was fun to watch. Um, and, and, you know, for Carlos, I think what people don't understand, and, and obviously things get hyped up in the press, especially with the Mexican national team, but that he is such a genuine and humble guy who honestly was the perfect DP for, for LAFC. Uh, not only to capture that fan base, but in terms of being a locker room guy, um, super generous, always has a smile on his face, really happy to be a part of the club. And, um, you know, being bilingual helps to, to bring the team together, and, and he's certainly an anchor of that club. 
Yeah. No, that's that's awesome. Yeah. From what I've seen, he's he's humble and and he's he's tries with his English, so it's it's really good. And a lot, yeah, he gets a lot of slack from the press, obviously for the national team. And and I think I don't know if he told you guys or if he talked about it much, but uh, people would always say, "Oh, what would have been if he actually liked soccer?" Because he always talks about how he likes basketball more than soccer. Yeah. So he just really plays it because he's good at it. But no, yeah, it's I just, that's just an interesting question that I had. But um, yeah, I don't sure. know what's to go. Yeah, I was just gonna mention um, obviously uh, three teams uh different experiences at all what what would you say like really uh which club really impacted you the most obviously SC Dallas started your career LAFC kind of like that was a different new team and now you're jumping to a new team obviously you scored the first goal for for Nashville which is a big accomplishment for the whole club and everything like that but, but what what uh so far I guess it's only really between SC Dallas and LAFC like which uh which club really impacted you the most and, and really uh helped you grow the most I guess yeah that's a great question I mean you can obviously take the political answer and say, oh, like I learned this here, I learned about this here. But for me, I think I really started to excel at LAFC. Um, Dallas was a time, it was, it was great to start out at. Um, learned a lot about being a pro, taking care of myself, hard work, because, you know, anyone who's been in MLS knows if you're in Dallas, you know, it's pretty much associated with you're going to train hard, you're going to train in the heat, you're going to get overworked sometimes, you know, leading into games. It's a very hard and difficult environment. Um, LAFC is, is great in development. I think they can take a player, even if, you know, even if you look at my case, I just kind of broken into the national team a year before and they're like, well, don't be content with that. Like, let's, let's go and work with on you, you know, with this, uh, with that. And um, the way that Bob kind of treats everyone the same, it's not like, it's not like since Carlos is the best player in the league that he's not having to work on different things or that Bob's critiquing him making him better. It's very much equal. It's not really guys getting special attention. Um, and it's focused on development. So I definitely grew a lot at LAFC. Um, I'm, I'm really excited that we got to win championships at both clubs. I think that's something that now that I've moved on to my third, I think my one of my goals in my career is to win a trophy at every club that I'm a part of. Um, because I want to be associated with, with winning and being a winner, and, and that's what I care about. <laughs> you know, I'm super competitive, and um, I think that'd be a really cool legacy to have. But, uh, yeah, I just think the way that LAFC operated, um, and, and even off the field, just the way that um, everything is structured um, with their medical staff, with their strength and conditioning staff, it's just very scientific and organized and well-run and well-managed. Um, that I think it offers a lot of opportunity for the player just to focus on the playing and everything else is kind of pretty seamless. Yeah, I mean, looking at from the outside in, I mean, I don't know much, but you can kind of tell the LAFC was run the right way. Uh, all the players were bought in and everything, but I kind of moving on to a little bit harder uh, question. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously after such a dominant season, what was the mood like, you know, not capturing that MLS club because I'm sure you guys all had your eyes set on it and it was pretty disappointing not being able to achieve it. Yeah, I mean, probably the most disappointing loss of my career in the sense that we we knew 100% that we were the best team in the league by a margin. Um, yeah. It wasn't even like we felt like any team could compete with us. We, we thought, man, we're the best team. Um, we should win this. We have home field advantage all the way through. And especially that playoff format that changed that was probably the biggest disappointment is we don't lose it. You know, we didn't lose at the bank. Um, and the fact that we ended up having the lead at home in the playoff game and not being able to see that through was, yeah, like I said, probably, probably going to be one of the biggest missed opportunities I'll ever have in my career. So that one hurt for sure. Um, I know everyone was really disappointed, but you know, that's, that's football. That's, people love the sport is literally you can be the best team you know not add 10 games but there's always something that can, can happen and um yeah I'll, I'll definitely rue that missed opportunity for sure yeah me and me and you have been there before SC Dallas we've lost maybe three or four championships uh just in our youth careers but uh you mentioned off the field uh in different places uh year one to to definitely uh help the community out in different uh locations what have you done uh maybe in Dallas or LAFC that that was that was not involved with soccer. They kind of helped out the community a little bit with uh, yeah. 
maybe community service or anything like that that could help me and Johan maybe help out our teams in our locations. Yeah, it was cool. I mean, you know, I think that MLS as a whole does a really good job of of offering uh, community service type events, whether it's through MLS Works, whether it's you know through a particular organization that the club kind of supports. Um, I thought LAFC did a really good job of creating the LAFC Foundation, um, which is just raising money. They were building a bunch of um, futsal courts across LA um, for for kids to be able to play the game everywhere at schools. Um, I you know I was. One of the things that I was bummed about when I got traded was I had been planning in L.A. Um, a karaoke fundraiser event to um, raise money for teaching gardens, which would be, you know, planted at schools, allowing kids with, you know, maybe lower income families to get uh, fresh produce and, and capitalize on good nutrition um, where they'd be able to actually eat from the garden that we build at their school. So that was a bummer. Um, we did, you know, I, it really, it's just partaking in a lot of other people's events so far in my career. So in Dallas, I was able to be a part of uh, the Heroes Foundation with Dirk and I'm playing that celebrity game once and coach once um, with that and, and getting able, you know, to meet other pro athletes from Cowboys, Mavs, uh, the Stars. I mean, it was just such a good networking event where you have pros who really care about the community come together play a, a charity baseball game and raise money um, was awesome. And then let's see in LA, um, you know, teaming up with, with Kershaw's challenge, uh, what Clayton Kershaw's doing with the Dodgers has been amazing to see um, doing a ping pong for purpose event and being able to play in that um, was a lot of fun raising money as well for um, sex trafficking uh, one year with that uh, in the Dominican Republic. So Really, so far, my career has been teaming up with other athletes and what they're doing. Um, and now I'm getting to the point in my career where I'm um, now looking for ways to begin something of my own. And you know, as I would Nashville, hopefully, hopefully I'll be here for a while. But looking at how uh, I look to plant some roots here and then maybe be the one organizing some type of event to benefit. Um, you know, my passion is, is youth and exercise and nutrition and making sure that, you know, those three things are, are taken care of in the community that I'm in. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's, it's good for me and, and Tanner coming up in the game of, uh, to look up to you like that because I know I definitely want to have a different kind of impact, not just in, in, in football itself, but outside of it as well. So I'll definitely see if uh, what I can do in my community. But, um, yeah, so I guess staying on that topic of, like, you helping us out in a way, so – we're all we're missing one member right now, but we're all eighteen year olds. You know, obviously Tanner's in the league. I'm abroad, and and uh, Judson's in college. So we're all kind of in different areas, but we're all starting our career in a way. So, what advice would you give yourself as an eighteen year old or, or us uh, to help start off our careers? Honestly, for me, I mean, at that time of my career, I you know, turned pro at nineteen, so you're a little bit ahead of the game. Um, but, you know, learning how to take care of my body on a regular basis. And that's, that covers so many areas. That is your nutrition plan, your weightlifting plan, your high speed running plan, uh, your stretching plan. Like literally, if you think about it, like if you can, if you can maintain your health, um, the opportunity for, uh, more income because of whether it's bonuses achieved in playing whether it's through more success on the field, which results in a bigger contract. Um, all of those things like seem so small, and they're probably the most important when you time all together. Um, so I, I would say really just figuring your body out. It is so worth it to pay for extra help if you need it, um, whether that's massage therapist, whether that's buying yourself Normatex, like whatever it is. Um, spending the money ahead of time to make sure that you have longevity and, you know, also a, a greater ability on the field. Um, so if you need flexibility, you got to learn how to be flexible. If you need strength, you got to learn how to develop strength. So that's, that's probably the most important thing from, from my end. Yeah, that's really, I appreciate that, that advice from me and Johan and we'll, we'll relay that on to Judd because that's definitely one thing I've been uh, working on. I tried to do a yoga course for a month and that was like one of the hardest things I ever did. So, 
Uh, yoga is the real deal out there if y'all are listening. Which uh, but typically I, means you need to keep working on it if it's hard. I'm the same way, man. Yoga, yoga crushes you. Yeah, but uh, I, I I found on Instagram. Um, I'm I'm so upset that Judd's not here. He's a center back. Me and I'm a midfielder. Johan's a forward. But uh, Judd plays the same position as you. And I was gonna send Judd to WZ training. I saw your uh, your old Instagram. I was gonna <laughs> oh send him over God. to WZ training, but that's I guess right. that's not in business anymore. It's not. It's not. It's 2017. Yeah, that that's out of business now, man. We um, it was fun. We did that a little bit. Had some success with that in Dallas, doing some private trainings. Um, had a buddy who uh, kind of helped start that with me, and um, man, it was just a lot of work. Um, it was great for the time, um, but really, I, I think you know, as I've gotten older, it's you know, looking at different ways to to impact the community and and use my time um, in a way that can help more people. Um, so. Moved on, but it, it was really fun. I know I had a lot of fun training the kids, and, and ultimately, like it, it did help me find a passion for coaching. I'm still interested in that as a particular avenue, so it's it's definitely going to be a beneficial experience moving forward. That's good. That's good. Uh, so the main question we we asked here, and before we move on to the last segment, which is the rapid fire, is so we're trying to define success. Obviously, we're we're young guys coming up, and and the people we interview have a little bit more experience than us typically, so. How do you define success, and do you think you've achieved it yet? Yeah, that's a great, that's a difficult question. Um, success for me is um, probably general happiness with life. Um, so I think like that can kind of include my soccer career, but I mean, way more importantly, my relationship with my wife, and my family. And my friends, I mean, being a good friend, teammate, and that, that all creates happiness. So success for me is uh, being a good husband, being a good friend, being a good teammate. Uh, and, and hopefully all those things lead to being successful in soccer, which I define as winning, winning championships. I touched on it before, but for me, success is you know, winning, winning championships at, at every club that I'm a part of. Um, and then maybe even more than that for me, it's probably having a long-term international career would be probably what I would define as, you know, my personal goals. That's good stuff. Solid answer. That's, that's definitely a good answer. One of our best answers yet. Yes. I have to say. Stop shooting for. All right. We're going to, we're going to head on to the rapid fire, maybe eight or nine questions. Just answer as fast as you can. Sure. And uh, that'll be it. All right. We'll start off with FC Dallas or LAFC. LAFC. Texas or Georgia? Texas. Are you a morning or night person? Night. Hardest player you've ever played against? Obafemi Martins. Favorite coach? Bob Bradley. Player you look up to? Michael Bradley. Pet peeve? Um, when people want to talk the talk and don't want to walk the walk. Favorite European club? Barca. Last song you listened to? 10,000 Hours, <laughs> Dan and Shay and Bieber. <laughs> like that, okay. And the best fan base in the MLS, who is it? Trill Baby. Uh, good All answer, right, good answer. that's the safe answer. answer. That was good. Rapid safe fire. answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but um, that's really all we have for today. We appreciate you coming on, um, just taking the time with us. You know, for everyone watching, just make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Go follow Walker on Instagram. Uh, we'll pop it up right there. Go show him love. Uh, go follow his career. He's going to be hopefully the captain of our our national team real soon. Lead us to the qualify. Lead us to the World Cup. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We need My that. Best. Yeah, and, we uh, really yeah. appreciate you coming on, Walker. Uh, you have Thanks, some great guys. answers. We'll definitely use the advice, man. We really awesome. appreciate it, man. Yeah, thank you, guys. Have a good one. Yeah, you too. Stay safe. Bye. All right, guys. Y'all just heard Walker. What he said. He said, "Go play Fortnite." Nah, I'm kidding. But uh, uh, y'all heard what Walker said. He had a lot of good answers uh, from helping out the community to different places. He's been in a lot of locations and uh, helped out the teams to win uh, championships, like he said. So he's a big time player that that me and Johan definitely look up to. 
and um, maybe one day hopefully to play with, um, whether that be national team or, or some club. But uh, he's a great guy, as y'all heard. So uh, make sure y'all go show him love on the Instagram, uh, Twitter as well. We'll pop up his Instagram and Twitter. Uh, if y'all watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. If you're watching on our podcast, leave a review. Uh, we appreciate all those. Uh, we love y'all. Go find your success. Your success, baby. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,